Welcome back to Anderson Acres. We are in the kitchen again today and it's time to make chocolate cake. A lot of people have asked. A surprising number of people have asked. So let's make chocolate cake. Now I make my chocolate cake, my very basic chocolate cake, with melted chocolate, okay? I don't use cocoa powder. You can, you can substitute half a cup of cocoa powder if you like, but I'm not going to. So before we can make our chocolate cake, we have to melt some chocolate, okay? So what we're gonna do is for the entire recipe, we're gonna need about, in a mixing bowl, we're gonna need a half cup of butter or margarine. That's butter, but you can use margarine if you like. And from that, we're going to steal about a tablespoon. Okay, not a ton. We're just gonna steal about a tablespoonful. So with that tablespoon of butter, I'm putting it in a chocolate melter. Now, a chocolate melter is pretty much my favorite thing on this planet. Okay, this is just a little tiny chocolate melter. You can get one off of Amazon. I'll provide a link in the description in case you can't find it, because sometimes it is more difficult to find them. So I will provide a link in the description. If you're going to do a significant amount of baking, you want a chocolate melter. Okay, this thing warms up. So this is a little ceramic pot that sits inside a heater. So this little metal pot with the little lids, with the little handles, has a, an element in it and it warms up your chocolate and it keeps it at a really great temperature so it doesn't burn, it doesn't scorch, it doesn't forget to melt because sometimes, you know, we're doing chocolates and it just doesn't melt. So what you want to do is get yourself a little chocolate melter. You can also do this in a double boiler on the stove, or you could use the microwave. I hate doing it in the microwave. It is easy to go over. I would rather take a little more time and get it correct and just melt it properly than accidentally overdo it in the microwave and end up with goo that's not usable. So a little bit of butter in the bottom, okay? And you're going to let that melt. Now I am going to end up time-lapsing this, okay? Yeah, I'm going to end up time-lapsing this because this will take a few minutes. So while this is melting, you're going to get yourself a couple of cake pans. I am using round cake pans, eight or nine inch, and you are going to either butter them or you're going to use some flour or you can use some cooking spray or cake goop or whatever it is you do to make your pans not stick. I'm going to use a canola oil cooking spray. And that's usually what I use. You've seen that in pretty much every video. I don't have it out right now because this is going to take a little while. So prep your pans. Okay, you want to spray them or use cake goop, whatever you like to do. I like spraying. Two eight or nine inch pans. Okay, it doesn't matter if they're eight or nine inch. The difference is negligible and it really is irrelevant. So spray those up, get those ready so that when you are done, your pans are already prepped. You're also going to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, this does take a few minutes. To be fair, so does melting chocolate any other way. So we're just gonna end up time-lapsing till this butter is melted. Then we're going to add some chocolate and again, I'll have to time-lapse. So that's what we're gonna do. Time-lapse is going to start right now. Okay, there we go. Our butter is melted. Okay, so now that our butter is melted, we need to add some chocolate. So we're gonna take about a half a cup. Yes, that's more than half a cup. There's nothing wrong with a little more chocolate. So half a cup or a little more, <laughs> depending on what you like, of semi-sweet chocolate chips or chocolate chunks or whatever you have in your cupboard. Use semi-sweet, not milk chocolate. Uh, semi-sweet melts better. So we're just going to let that melt and it'll melt fairly quickly, but we're still gonna end up time-lapsing this. So let that time-lapse right now. <laughs> All right, when this is partially melted, set it aside a little bit, not too far and get your mixer out. So I am using the Bosch Compact Kitchen Machine, the 400 watt version, because people ask every time. So I'll put a link to this machine, but you use any mixer you have. You can use your hand mixer. You can even mix this by hand if you wanted. 
I'm not gonna, <laughs> but you can. I'm just not gonna. <laughs> so any mixer you have, I'll put a link to this one, but you seriously don't need this mixer, it's fine. So what we're going to do now is start mixing our ingredients while this guy continues to melt, okay? He will only take a couple more minutes. It's much faster because you have the butter in there that already started at melting. So a couple more minutes, and then we are going to add our chocolate. So we gotta get this started. So you're gonna have the rest of your butter in your mixing bowl, okay? To that, we are going to add our sugar. This is one and a half cups of sugar. Get that sugar in there. And start that mixing. You want it just a little bit fluffy. That's fine. So then we are going to add about a teaspoon of vanilla. You don't need a ton of vanilla, just a teaspoon is quite good enough. And two eggs. You can use the eggs from your chickens unless your chickens decided not to lay this week. Then you'll have to get creative and go to the store. So now we're gonna blend that up. When we get to that point, we're going to lift this right up. We are going to unplug our chocolate melter. Ooh, sorry for that. Unplug our chocolate melter. And we are going to take our chocolate. Now, you might have to use an oven mitt to pick up the chocolate pot if you're using a chocolate melter. But I tend not to. I tend to just grab it. I shouldn't, but I do. So I'm just going to grab a heat pad just because the bottom will be pretty hot. Okay, and what you're going to do is this might not be fully melted, but it'll be pretty darn close and you don't want to go over. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that chocolate and literally just spoon it into there. Okay? Is that a thing? No. <laughs> so Sometimes I imagine things that I'm seeing something and it's not there. It's just the way the light's coming in the window makes me think there's a thing right here. And there's not. Okay. There we go. Scoop that off with your rubber spatula. Okay. We are officially done with the chocolate melter. You can take it and set it aside, which is what I'm going to do now. Okay. Now we're going to do, take this, scrape your spatula off on your beater because you want all that chocolatey goodness. Okay, there we go. Lower our beater back down, whip that up. Okay, now we're gonna add one cup of milk. Gently for this next mix or your milk's going to come flying out. Now we're going to add our dry ingredients. You're going to want two cups of flour. You will want about half a teaspoon of salt. Yes, you need the salt. Don't skip it. It unifies your flavors and makes your cake taste better, even though you don't need a ton of it. So use the salt. You are also going to want one and a quarter teaspoons of baking soda. 
not powder, soda. And now we're going to mix that up, okay? Gently at first, because flour tends to spit right out of here if you're not gentle. Okay, it's not ready yet, but we want to scrape down our sides real quick, just because no matter what mixer you're using, ingredients right up on the side, they can't help it. It's just the way it is, so you just got to scrape your sides down, and then scrape your spatula off. Sorry for the close-up there. <laughs> but uh, scrape your spatula off on your beater. Drop your beater back down. Now you're going to mix until smooth. Fairly high speed. off your beater because we want all that chocolatey goodness so I'm going to pop this beater in a bowl over here so it's not in our way take our bowl off our mixer we're not going to need the mixer anymore let's just pop that off to the side that's what it should look like okay that's what it should look like nice and smooth now we need our two cake pans Make some room here. Two cake pans. And we're going to divide this evenly between them. Remember, it doesn't matter whether you use an 8 inch or a 9 inch cake pan. You can use square cake pans. You can even do this as one big sheet cake. It actually doesn't matter. So let's get some batter into each. And there might be some, the occasional chocolate chip. That is still unmelted. That doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, here we go. The rest of this is going in here. There we go. Now, what makes this cake so rich and delicious is the fact that we used chocolate. Okay, we didn't use cocoa. You can use cocoa, but using actual semi-sweet chocolate really enhances the flavor of this cake because you're using real thick beautiful chocolate there we go also i recommend using real butter you can use margarine it's not that big a deal but if you use real butter you will really get a nice cake also you can substitute and use uh, water instead of milk but again you won't have quite that same texture quite that same depth of flavor okay there we go okay now we want to do kind of give these guys a tap and a shake to kind of equalize the batter one thing this does is it levels your batter but the other thing it does is there's air bubbles inside your cake that just happens when you're using a mixer the air enters the batter so there's air bubbles in there and what you want to do is knock them out so you just kind of knock them and it levels them and it also allows those air bubbles to get out of there. Okay? So once you're ready, you can pop these in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit and you're going to cook them for around 30 minutes, plus or minus 3 minutes, depending on your oven. So check them just before 30 minutes, but they'll probably take 30 minutes on the nose if your oven is like mine. So we will come back as soon as these are baked. All right, our cakes have baked for 30 minutes. Now this is a rather delicate cake, so you wanna cool them in the pan for 10 minutes. Then you're gonna to need to remove them from the pan. So the first thing you wanna try, cause sometimes they can be difficult to get out of the pan, just take a plate that's about the right size 
invert your cake onto it and just see that one came out real nice. So that's out. Now we're going to get another plate and do the same thing. So again, plate on here, flip it, just see if that'll come up, and it did. So sometimes these cakes don't want to release very well. Now this is where some chocolate chips were. Sometimes a cake doesn't want to release very well simply because these particular cakes can be a little delicate. So then being careful not to drop them and don't like smash them onto your cooling rack, but just kind of turn them back over. There we go. Let them cool on these racks. Okay, you want to let them cool completely before you do anything else because if your cakes are not cooled before you ice them, then you're going to end up with just a mess because icing melts on hot cake. So you're just going to ignore them, let them cool. It'll probably take about 45 minutes to an hour. So what do you do with them after this? Well, it's a chocolate cake. What do you like with chocolate cake? If you like buttercream, put buttercream icing on it. I will put a link in the description to a buttercream frosting if you really don't know what you want to do. You can, of course, just eat these the way they are without frosting them at all. It's delicious cake either way. Uh, my favorite frosting with a chocolate cake is a whipped cream uh, frosting. I will put a link to that recipe as well because that's my favorite. But when in doubt, go with a plain buttercream. It'll be delicious. So that's about it for us here at Anderson Acres. I hope you will try making this basic chocolate cake at home. It's delicious and certain to be a crowd pleaser. We'll see you tomorrow.